Hi, my name is Amy. I am the owner of Amy Lynn Creative. I'm a brand photographer and I share tips and tricks for online business owners on this YouTube channel. I am talking about HoneyBook and HoneyBook Smart Files. Um, HoneyBook is the CRM that I use to not only make my life easier, but also um, create a really streamlined experience for my clients, which is why I love it. But I'm talking a lot about HoneyBook because they just released their new Smart Files feature, which has totally changed the game um, for um, creating consistent brand visuals for my business, which as a brand photographer is really important to me. I'm looking at the wrong camera. Hi, my name is Amy. Welcome to this YouTube channel where I share tips and tricks for online business owners. I am a brand photographer and I use HoneyBook in my business to not only make my life easier, but to create a streamlined process for my clients. Um, and I use it to, for everything from communication to sending proposals and contracts and the exclusive design workbook that I sent to them to prep for their brand session. HoneyBook just released their brand new um, feature called Smart Files. It has totally changed the game. I have a whole video walkthrough in another video, but I wanted to talk about how to clean up the design of your smart files. So I want to share some tricks with you. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started. Okay. This is my fake brand. <laughs> I created a whole separate, um, company inside of HoneyBook. If you're familiar with HoneyBook already, you know, you can create, add a different company under your profile. I just created a fake company called Elena Ray um, Consulting. It is a coaching company for female entrepreneurs. And I even created Elena's fake website with these stock photos from Canva. I did not take this photo. This is just to get an idea visually because the visuals are very important to this example. Um, but now I'm back in HoneyBook and I'm showing you I'm in the My Templates section under Tools, and I already have a Smart Files template created. Again, if you want to see the full behind the scenes of how I created this template, you can see that video. I'm going to click on my template and open my Smart File. Okay, so this is the welcome page of my onboarding sequence. And you can see it is pretty bare bones. We want to liven up the design a little bit. I have eight design hacks for you, and we're going to start with graphics. So you can see I have a header here and this header was actually created in Canva. I created a few other Canva graphics as well. I didn't go crazy, but I just wanted a few extra things that were on brand for Elena Ray based on her website and her logo that I quick put together in Canva. So I want to show you those really quick. So we're going to go over to Canva. I have a Canva pro account just so you know. Um, I find it quite worth it. Um, first, I just created some rectangle or some squares of color. I just wanted some color and I can crop those in various ways um, to get creative with some of the design there if I want to. I also created some icons. These are just from the elements section. I just typed in, you know, a phone and pulled these very simple graphics in so that I can use them for icons. I also created these little flower graphics that are very similar to um, that I wanted as part of her brand. So let's go back to HoneyBook. And so that's how I created the header. And that is my first hack for you is create some graphics outside of Smart Files and bring them in um, because the design functionality is a little bit limited in Smart Files. To bring it to the next level, it's totally optional, but to bring it to the next level, you may want to create some graphics elsewhere and bring them in as images. So let's talk about this first paragraph. Um, this welcome text, if you notice, this is actually the huge setting. You can go much larger by using the custom button. Let's just say a hundred for giggles. And all of a sudden that welcome text creates much more of an impact much more punch than the tiny um, text did. So what I did was I just selected the text and put in a custom number. Um, th these are all relatively small. So I did create a custom number for this and we have a little more pop just like that. Okay, let's move on to this next paragraph. Let's talk about using columns strategically. So for this one, I want to add a photo to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go over here to columns and create a second column. Unfortunately, it created a column on the left. So what I actually wanna do is move this over to here. Do you have to move each of these individually? And then here, I'm going to add an image. And we'll just add a nice headshot here. I'm going to crop it in a circle. 
because I like how polished that looks. Crop it. Brand photographer note here, your headshot should be nice and close up so that people can see your face. And I want to increase the size of this a little bit. I'm going to put the alignment over here. You have some alignment options. So we could put it on the left, center, the right, or we could stretch it with and we'll put this on the right. And you can see a really good way to see how this is going to look is to go ahead and hit preview. And we've already elevated the look of this a lot now. I'm noticing that my column width, I'm going to increase the spacing just a little bit because it's looking a little crowded. All right, and I'm gonna actually increase the padding on this as well. Perfect. So that is one way to use columns. Another way to use columns is to add empty columns on either side of a piece of text. You can see this is a little bit awkward. I really want the typing more words as an example on another line. So let's play with our width a little bit. This is medium, this is large, and this is small. You can see that none of these are what I'm going for. And if I click 100%, it's not helpful either. So to really customize this width, if you want to be really specific about how the text looks or how any block of anything looks, I'm going to change this to three columns. I'm going to move my text over to the center column, and then I'm going to start playing with the width of the columns using this bar and dragging until I have what I want. You're just gonna remember to drag them evenly. So that's what I want right there. Just drag this a little more. I am eyeballing this. And there we have it. So those are two different ways that I like to use columns. A third way that I like to use columns, along with those little icons from Canva, you can see um, this click next below to view and select services. I wanna emphasize a little bit. So I am going to add an image I've already added columns, so uh, I'll back up a little bit. If you click here, you'll see that I have three columns selected and I have a column on either side of this text. I'm gonna add an image. I'm gonna add one of my little icons. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add another little icon, flower. Perfect. Now you can see when I preview this, this is all out of whack. And this brings me to my next tip. cropping images strategically. So I'm gonna go up here to this little flower and I'm gonna click crop and look how big this is. I'm gonna actually crop closer, right about like that, and I do want it to be a square. There we go, apply. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this flower as well. I want it to be roughly the same proportions as the previous one. And it's still not quite where we want it, but you can see that now the flowers are a little bit better aligned. I want them to be a little closer to the text. I also want them to be a little larger. So we're gonna go like this, stretch them a little bit using the corner handles. Now they're really out of whack. We're gonna take this and we're gonna move this to the left and we're going to move this to the right with the image alignment. Preview it again because it is going to preview a little bit differently than it looks in the builder. I have noticed that. If I wanted to adjust this a little bit more, what I would do is I'm going to click my text here and I'm going to add a divider. So I'm clicking the little plus and I'm adding a divider right above it. I'm going to decrease the height so it's just a teeny little divider and then I'm going to click preview. And now it's almost perfectly centered on those little flowers. All right, we are looking pretty good here. On to the next tip. Okay, let's talk about images a little bit. There are a lot of different ways to crop an image and I want to go back to this image right here. As I mentioned, the way you crop the image can make a big difference and we saw that with the little flowers. We saw that here. You can do a square. And I just want to show you a little glitch here. When I set it as a circle, it automatically set the corner radius to 100. If you change it to a square, you're going to have to also fix the circle radius, or the corner radius, I'm sorry. 
So it's still showing as a circle, but that is because the corner radius is all the way up. So you turn that down. There we have it. You can make it a little smaller to fit the height of the text. You don't want it to be too big. I can adjust this column. This is another tip. Adjust the width of your text, your columns, to align it with the height of the image so that they're roughly the same height. Let's preview that and see how it looks. I, I do like the square. I prefer the circle personally, but this is a nice look as well. You can see the difference that makes though. So lots of different ways to do that. If you were to crop this as a rectangle and then increase the corner radius, um, you can create this rounded corners look. And we'll preview that again to see what that looks like. So some different ways to crop images. All right, now let's go to our services tab because I wanna show you, um, these are just, these are the little icons I made in Canva. And I want to clean these up a little bit. So this is okay, but I wanna actually adjust these images. So I'm gonna crop this to a circle. And you can see that just makes such a difference. And then the other thing I wanted to show you you can add sub items and you can add an image a square that I made. We're going to make a little, this is incredibly awkward. So let's make this a circle instead. And you could even do the little coffee cup if you wanted, or you could do a photo here, any of those things, but making it a circle really um, refines it a little bit, especially for this kind of fun and playful brand. So if I preview this, when they click view more details, they'll see this come up and they'll see another service here with the two icons. Now we're gonna kick it up a notch. We're gonna start fresh. We're gonna add three columns. I'm gonna create a little bit of a grid here. I am cropping all these images to squares. And I'm adding a divider underneath each one. Okay, so I'm not suggesting that you put, you know, a brand photo of yourself in all nine of these, but we wanted to show you a little example. Let's preview this. There's a lot of different ways you can use this grid, but I just wanted to show you some ways you can get creative with this. Obviously, we want to fix um, this image right here in the middle because it's out of alignment. But other than that, this looks pretty good. Put this divider and increase the height of this, like so. And that's a little better. Okay, my next step has to do with custom fonts. This welcome is a custom font and it, it was downloaded through Google Fonts. I have more about this in a video that I will put up above, but that's my next tip, adding custom fonts. Okay, I hope you can take these design hacks and run with them. Those are the quick tips I have for now. I'll be sure to share more later as I continue to explore smart files. One last thing I wanna share, if you find yourself feeling overwhelmed, I am taking a limited number 
of clients where this is concerned. So if you'd like me to customize your smart files for you, please get in touch with me using the contact information in the description and we can get started on your smart files.